Hello everyone! Welcome to Story Time with the Princess. Today we're going to be reading from Disney's Christmas Storybook. And the story is called Pinocchio's Perfect Gift. It was almost Christmas and Geppetto was frantically busy making toy soldiers and dolls. In fact, Santa himself had placed a big order because his elves were behind schedule. Each day as Geppetto carved and glued and painted, he grew more rushed and more weary. Meanwhile, Pinocchio, with the help of Chimney Cricket, was getting the house ready for his first Christmas as a real boy. He had Chimney put up a tree, strung garlands of holly from the rafters, and even baked a plum pudding. Chimney, I want to find the perfect gift for Geppetto. Will you help me? Pinocchio asked. Well, if you asked me, Chimney began, but Pinocchio was too excited to listen. He was already out the door and on his way to the shops. Chimney caught up with him at the cutlery shop. How about a new knife, said Pinocchio. I'll take the black one. Pinocchio pulled out his coins. The shopkeeper shook his head. I'm sorry, son. The poorest of my wares cost ten times what you have. Undaunted. Pinocchio dashed into another store. They shopped for socks, for gloves, for caps, to keep Geppetto warm while he worked, a chest to keep his tools in, an armchair to relax in, but everything was too small, too big, or too expensive. Now it was Christmas Eve, and the shopkeepers were locking their doors, and it was time to return home. Chimney, cried Pinocchio, what am I going to do? Well, you know, I did have this idea, Jimmy replied with a sigh. Really, said Pinocchio. Why didn't you say so before? Jimmy sat Pinocchio at the kitchen table. You want to give your father something he really needs. I sure do, beamed Pinocchio. More than anything I do. Jimmy handed Pinocchio a pen and paper. Write. And write what I tell you, he dictated. Dear Geppetto, this will entitle you to an extra pair of hands, an extra pair of legs, and an extra willing heart. Your loving son, Pinocchio. But, but Jiminy, it's just a scrap of paper. What a sort of gift is that? Jiminy took the note, put it in a box, and tied it with a ribbon. If you ask me, what the poor man really needs is help. All the work he has can't be done alone. Now, let's get to the workshop. When Geppetto opened his gift, he was overjoyed. Well now, I guess I could use a pair of hands. Pinocchio scurried about the workshop, sweeping up shavings, tending the fire, boxing and wrapping toys. He finally finished at midnight, and just in time, just at the stroke of twelve, there came a thump on the roof then a clatter that shook the whole house. Santa had come to pick up the bundle of gifts that Geppetto had made. At the window appeared the jolly old elf. Phew, he said. That was a close one, Geppetto. I can't thank you enough for helping me out. Never would have made it without the help of my son, said Geppetto. Santa took out his notebook. I'll have to remember that. That night, as Pinocchio slept, I appeared to him. Santa sent me, I said, because you'd been so thoughtful. He wanted me to drop off a Christmas wish. If you asked me, piped up Jiminy, who was perched on the top of the headboard. I have an idea, said Pinocchio. I know exactly what I want. I want the perfect gift for Geppetto. I smiled. Very well. That's what we'll do. Geppetto awoke early in the morning and went to light the Yule log. There, hanging from the Christmas tree, he found, oh no, it couldn't be, the puppet Pinocchio. Pinocchio, he fell back into his chair. My dear Pinocchio. Pinocchio and Jimmy came running from the bedroom. What is it, father? My gift. How did you ever make it? Pinocchio turned toward the tree and saw the doll, a perfect copy of the puppet he used to be. Puppet Pinocchio, 
was my favorite toy, said Chipotle, because I wanted him to be my son, and now I have both. A shadow crossed Pinocchio's face. You mean you've missed the doll? Have I been a disappointment? You've been a perfect son in every way, Pinocchio, except you don't dance too well. Geppetto pulled the puppet from the tree and danced him wildly around the room. Stopping for breath, he added, because I'm a toy maker, no one has ever thought to give me a toy of my own to play with. Only you, Pinocchio, understand how much I love toys. Under the tree were a number of gifts for Pinocchio, brought by Santa, perhaps, or made by Geppetto. But I have sent him the best gift of all, a smile on his father's face.